Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Andrew Benjamin of MMASucker.com. With me, I've got Brendan Lochnane, who will be the PF, one of the PFL finalists at, on November 25th, taking on Bubba Jenkins. Uh, Brendan, thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time, mate. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no problem. No problem. So I just got to ask, how's it feel that you've, uh, you've uh, made it this far and are going to be in the finals for the uh, $1 million championship? Best feeling in the world. So happy to get here. Uh, in such a tough tournament under difficult circumstances and was happy to be at the end now and I'm ready to take my world title and my money. And, and so uh, what do you credit uh, to you getting to, to this to this place finally? Is it, do you credit uh, your training or I know you have a mind coach now, like what, what, what do you collectively credit at all? What, what, what do you, uh, what is, what is your, uh, what do you see as how you got here? Um, I just credit hard work, really. I work my ass off every single day, all day. Um, and I don't know, it's just not happened by accident. I'm just happy that I'm here now. You know, what are we now? 10 weeks away from the fight and uh, feel great. Are you in camp right now? Are you taking a little bit of a break? Or are you, uh, what, are you, what are you doing right now in terms of training? I don't really believe in camps. I train, I train all year round. Um, so, yeah, camps are not really a thing for me. I just keep myself in shape all year round. So, uh, talk, talk a little bit about that, because I know that there's there's people, fighters who, you know, when they're not in camp, uh, you know, they go out, I guess maybe the famous, most famous example is Paddy Pimblett, who's, you know, as soon as he's done with camp, you know, spurges and becomes 200, uh, 200 pounds. Uh, but you you said you're always in a, in a fighting shape? Always in fighting shape. I mean, listen, we chose this as a profession. This is our job. So, you know, you've got to be professional with it. And I think being professional means keeping your weight to a reasonable degree, keeping your body healthy. I mean, at the end of the day, this is our business. This is, you know, our body is what makes us the money. So you've got to keep it right. And, and so with, uh, with the, uh, the match with Bubba Jenkins coming up, uh, tell me, is there uh, what do you think about him as a fighter? Uh, have you seen his other fights uh, throughout the year that he's had in PFL? Yeah, I like Bubba. Bubba's a good guy. He's a great wrestler, good, great MMA fighter. He's uh, he's improved a lot recently, um, and I've always wanted to fight him, even though we've been friends. I'm excited that we're going to fight, uh, and uh, I'm excited to test my skills. Oh, so so actually, can you just clarify? So you've, you've been friends. Have you trained together, or you just uh, you know each other through the MMA circuit? Well, we've both been in PFL for a number of years now, and. Um, we actually had to do a quarantine last year where we was all locked together for 17 days. And then I just ended up being friendly with the guy and I, I like him. He came to my after party in London, we chilled. And I said, I'll see you in a few months. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah, well, just, uh, what do you, uh, like, just tell me what you think about him as like a fight. Like when well, he's like maybe one of the best, uh, wrestlers, uh, like collegiate wrestlers turned fighters. And, you know, it, the way that he just, he applies his wrestling to his matches it is amazing. Um, yeah, what do you just think about like his his style? Yeah, you just hit the nail on the head. He's a great wrestler. His striking's got a lot better recently too. So um, I just think the difference in this fight is um, Bubba grew up wrestling. I grew up fighting. And at the end of the day, this is a fight. It's not a wrestling match. So I think that's what um, that's where we'll shine through in this fight. Mm -hmm. Uh. I know. I just uh, read recently as well that you hired a mind coach. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I'm, I'm very interested to hear about that. Not really. I went to see a guy that I've known for a long time. We've actually seen him before. It was only a 45-minute session. A lot of people seem to be playing up on this mind coach thing. Like It changed my whole life. I mean, I did a session and it's really my hard work and dedication to the sport that shone through in that fight. I think, I think a bit too much is being made about the mind coach, but obviously it all helped. Mm. Uh, so one of the things I'm also curious to know that you've been in the fight game for a long time. I'm always curious to know how fighters evolve from when they first started to where they are now. And I'm just curious to know what what have you done to evolve your training? Is it more training? Is it is it uh, fighting uh, training and more in one other discipline? Yeah, just tell me about your evolution from day one since you started this till now. I've done long stints in Thailand, long stints in America. I've done long stints in multiple countries across the world learn up all the arts from from the masters the Thai boxing from the Thais the jiu-jitsu from the Brazilians the Russians wrestling so I feel like I've got the best of all inside me 
What do you, out of all the places, all the areas you've trained, what would you say was the most toughest and most grueling uh, area to have trained? Probably Thailand, where I am now. That's the reason I keep coming back. We're training so hard here. I mean, I've just finished the session now with Peter Yan. We've been training together most days. So, you know, I'm surrounded by killers. Also, probably doesn't help as well that it's about 100 degrees there right now, probably, right? <laughs> uh, so, and so, oh, so that's interesting that you're in Thailand right now. Um, do you ever foresee maybe ever maybe making a permanent move to Thailand? I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, Americans, British, uh, Europeans who now just permanently train there, a.k.a. Team Phuket. Uh, is that something you would ever think about doing, maybe? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I did my first camp here for the PFL. I did uh, three months, flew to America, went back, did my second camp in England, and then I've come back here to do this camp. So, yeah, I love it. I'm always in and out of Thailand. Um, hey, uh, what is it, uh, besides, uh, uh, obviously, training there, anything else do you like about Thailand? Do you like the food? Do you like the, uh, it is the land of smiles, you know, as they say. Anything else that you like about the uh, country? Everything, I mean, it's just made for fighters. There's a street here. It's got four or five gyms on, 25 massage parlors, ice baths, saunas, healthy food. It's just, it's just set up. It's a great environment for fighters. You ever uh, just uh, talk or, like, you ever uh, interact with the other Muay Thai people and they, and they say they've been, like, training since, like, 10 or competing since 10 and they have, like, 100. Their record's, like, 110, 70 uh, losses and, like, 20. You ever, you ever meet those uh, type of fighters? Exactly, they're everywhere, surrounded by killers like that. Is that is that is that doesn't that just like when you hear their record or like or how long they've been fighting? Does that kind of like just blow your mind? Like I can't believe like you've been doing this since like ten years old and like you already have like a five hundred five hundred fights total. It's just such a culture out here, it really is, and uh, it's great to immerse yourself with these people. It really is. Mm -hmm. Um, and so um, I, I, what uh, do you know what you'll be uh? Do you know where you'll be uh, maybe potentially trained next? Do you see yourself coming back to America, Brazil? Uh, if things get better in Russia, maybe, maybe even Japan. Do you, have you, do you plan out like where you want to do some training? Like, uh, is that something you, you plan out or is it just kind of like co your coach's recommendations? I just look around and see who's where, uh, see where I can get the best training. I found out that Peter Yam was in camp over here. So he's got six or seven guys all the same weight. We just get up in the morning and we get after it. Uh, what is the uh, what would you say is the hardest uh, aspect of still of doing this for so long that uh, doing this sport for so long? Is there something that you know you just is like, yeah, it's just it's still like you still you still adjust you're still trying to adjust to even even though you've been at this for so long. Uh, that's a good question. Probably the diet. Probably just dieting all year round, like not being able to just have a burger when you want. Um, or actually missing a lot of social occasions. I just missed one of my best friend's weddings because I'm out here in camp. So missing social events and diet probably. Uh, I know you did say before that you ought, that you do, that it's part of the job to be in shape, but I don't know, do you ever, is it after a fight, do you, is that when you have your, I guess you could call it your cheat or like something like that? Is there Is there any opportunities for you to do that or is it just kind of like, you had your fight, you're going back to the gym the next day, still doing your uh, your diet. Last season, I got it very wrong. I was back in the gym the next day, but this season. Hello? Oh, sorry. Still here. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, last season, I got it wrong and I didn't rest at all. And I was burnt out by the semis. This season, I've got it perfect. My body feels great. My mind feels great. I'm in a great place. Uh, and so, uh, uh, also, I wanted to also note that uh, on your record, it's always interesting to always hear this, of that uh, your four losses, but no, that have never been finished. I'm curious to know, how, what do you credit, even though those losses are on your record, for not getting finished? And they're very also they're also very close fights as well. Uh, uh, split decisions, I think they were at least one or at least two or, or three or split decisions. What do you uh, what do you credit to not getting finished so far in any of your losses? I'm a tough motherfucker, bro. I'm resilient. I've got a good chin, and I'm hard to beat. Mm. And uh, so uh, 
you know, uh, after the PFL, you, you go, you win. I mean, you know, do you know what you're going to do next? Do you have you figured that out, or you just uh, you just figure you're just focusing on on this right now? I'm just happy, man. I'm just in a great place, and I'm just looking forward to showing the world how good I am. Everybody mm-hmm. thought Chris Peake was going to beat me. That went wrong for him. Everybody mm-hmm. thinks Bubba Jenkins is going to beat me. That's going to go wrong for him too. And I'm going to show the world how great I am. That's just it. That's a fact. I know that's what's going to happen. Is being the underdog, is that a motivating factor going to fights more than being the favorite, would you say? Mm, don't really matter. Cage door locks, favorites, underdogs, it's a fight. Mm. But in a way, if you are be the one that's being doubted as the winner, that's got to be an extra motivation. And always coming out, and coming out the winner. That's got to be extra motivation going into your next fight because you're like, oh, listen, if you're still considering me you know, the underdog or, or not the favorite and I'm, and I'm winning, you know, it's kind of like, kind of like almost like a big fuck you to the people who are saying, you know, that, that you don't have, uh, that you're, that they're overlooking you. Yeah. I mean, it, it does, but at the same time, everybody has an opinion. Everybody's entitled to opinion and like, they just don't phase me anymore at this stage of the game. You can't let them. I've been in the MMA for 16 years. Like nobody thought I was going to get as far as I did. And when I win this belt and this million dollars, everyone's going to know how good I am. Do you have any plans for that uh, million dollars right now? Is there anything that you that you were going to do with it? Take a vacation? I don't know. Go to space? Have you decided what you want to do with it? No idea yet, but I'm sure I'll have plenty of ideas when it lands. Um, actually, you just brought up an you brought up an interesting point uh, that I, I I very I've been very interested to hear from fighters. And, and you said you've been fighting for sixteen years. Everybody's got an opinion. One of the things I've I like to ask fighters who've been fighting for a long time is about social media and fighters. Uh, I'm curious to know: Do you think that social media has? Do you think it's been a a, a benefit to the fight game, or has it been a hindrance, or maybe neither? What do you What do you think about that? Just it's just part of the job. It's just something that you have to do. Any fighter that doesn't do it, it's, it's not smart. You have to build your brand outside of fighting. Fighting's only fifty percent of it now. You really have to build your brand outside of fighting, and that's the truth. Uh, what what what? Do you have any other uh, brands? Uh, any of your personal things that you're doing outside of fighting right now? Um, that you can uh, plug? I mean, no, not really. I've got a few properties. Um, I'm investing my money, but. Nothing to uh, to scream home about just yet, but obviously I'll be looking for major investments once I uh, drop this million. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So that, that's po- that's possibly something that you could do with it is the is going to the investment circuits. Uh, yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, I'm forgetting the fighter from UFC. Al Al Quinta. That's what he did with his uh his money. Uh, was was uh was it flipping houses? Maybe it was flipping houses, or something like that. Um. Let's see. Uh, what do you? Uh, what do you? Uh, uh, what is it that you that that? Uh, so you've been at this for sixteen years. What is the sport? What What is it that you that you enjoy about so much that you've been doing this for sixteen years and maybe we'll do it for another I don't know five or ten years if you see yourself doing that. Um, I don't know. I get to wake up every day. I don't have a boss. I do whatever the fuck I want. If I want to get out of bed at eleven a.m., I will. Nobody ain't gonna ring my phone and tell me what I need to do. Or you have to be here at this time. I'm my own boss. I train hard as fuck. I've got an incredible work ethic, and that's why I've been so successful. Uh, when you were uh, when you were first starting off, did you have a boss? Was that was it? Did you have like a like your your I guess your survival job, as they say? And was that if you did, was that just like that? Just tell you that immediately. Just tell you I can't I can't do the survival job shit. But you just answered your own question. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so yeah it's uh it's it's, it's great it, it, do you ever see yourself maybe be, becoming the boss maybe maybe uh, a coach maybe like uh, just like you know when you retire maybe just become yeah a coach in uh thailand or going back to the uk who knows the opportunities are endless when you've got a mill in your bank right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and uh curious, curious to know uh, uh uh are you looking at any of the other fights i'll be uh They'll be on the PFL finals. Any other uh, the fi- uh, matches that um that are interest you? Uh, I I know we got uh, Stevie Ray from Scotland uh fighting, uh and then um I'm trying to I'm trying to think offhand, but uh, yeah I, I don't know. Is there any other fights that uh, you're looking forward to? 
No, I just think it's going to be a great night. There's some great matchups, and uh, it's PFL's poster event, and I'm just so happy to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you for you, you think you'll do it again? You wanted to go through the rigors of the PFL tournament next year again, or you think you might just be like, ah, oh, you know, I did this two years in a row. Let me take let me take the third year. Let me take the third one off, and I'm maybe next year I'll come back. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'm curious to know as well, when you're, when you're not fighting, when you're not training, when you're not staying in shape, is there anything that you just like to do uh, on your free time? Um, not really, no. I'm just so committed to the sport. It's always related to the sport, you know what I mean? So I'm going to have to find some more hobbies for after. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, actually, it's curious to know, are you, uh, are you a fan of any of the uh, Premier Leagues? Not really, no. Really? Okay. Uh, very rare to hear from somebody from the UK who is not a fan of, who does not watch any of the Premier Leagues. There you go. Um, any particular reason why? Is it just not your thing? or? I mean, I grew up on it and I just fell out of love with it now. That's, that's the top and bottom of it, really. Got, ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, as, as we're coming down to the uh, wire, I would just like to ask, you know, um, if you uh, had any last comments or statements you want to make about your fight coming up against Bubba, Jake, Bubba Jenkins, if you want to, yeah, uh, the floor is yours, mate. No, thanks for the support and everybody tuning in. It's going to be a great night. And, uh, yeah, I just want to also give you an opportunity to plug your sponsors, social media, coaches, GM, anything else that you want to give a, a shout-out to. Anybody that's involved with me, they know who they are. Nothing but love. Okay, great. You can see. Brendan Lockdown take on Bubba Jenkins November 25th at the PFL Finals. And uh, yeah, Brendan, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be an exciting night. And, you know, man, you know, it's been, been I've been watching your journey since the, uh, since, uh, the Contender Series. And, man, it's been quite a journey for you, man. It's, you know, happy for you. Really happy for you that you've made this far. Thank you, bro. Yeah, no problem, mate. Looking forward to the fight. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.